You are listening to Lone Star Community Radio on 104.5 KCZW and 106.1 KZCC Conroe and worldwide on the IRLoneStar.com. Trick or treat, Lone Star Radio listeners. This is Dick, the general manager, taking this quick moment to remind you that Lone Star Community Radio is looking to fill some of our talk show slots along with some of our DJ slots. We have a new show airing on the 10th, Making Connections with Stacey Harris, which will air every second Tuesday of the month at 1 p.m. Make sure to check it out along with our other programs on Lone Star Community Radio. More information on Lone Star Community Radio, visit us online at IRLoneStar.com. And again, if you're interested in doing something with us, Call the station, 936-647-3776. Thanks for checking out this recording, and I hope you guys enjoy. And welcome back to uh, our broadcast from uh, April Sound. This is Ted Cox. I uh, am the host of the Good News Show, which normally occurs on Thursday afternoons from 1 to 3. Uh, We're here at uh, April Sound uh, for the Lobster Fest, which is part of the Conroe, Lake Conroe Chamber of Commerce. Uh, It's a wonderful fundraiser, and we couldn't really have asked for a a more beautiful summer day in uh, early October. Uh, We look forward to a little bit of cool weather, I think, that's coming in. Hopefully, Nate won't uh, bother us too much. Uh, But for uh, for those who normally listen in on, on, uh, or have not listened in normally on Thursdays from 1 to 3 in the Good News Show, um, my show was, uh, was originally conceived uh, as, uh, as a, a bit of a respite just for a couple of hours during the week as we all are bombarded with bad news. If you tune in uh, each of the evenings and you see any of the news channels or your evening news, it just seems like we're bombarded uh, with just a continual uh, stream of, of bad news. And it can sort of uh, play on you and get, get you down. And so the intent... Uh, for the show, and what we've tried to do is have guests on uh, who are just ordinary folks uh, out in the community that are doing extraordinarily good things for the community. Uh, And so yesterday we were talking, this is going to be a bit of an extension from yesterday, so for those of you who were not with us, uh, we started out the show by uh, talking a little bit about kind of the general fatigue of the last couple of years generally, and really kind of the last 60 days uh, specifically. Uh, I mentioned that part of what I do uh, sort of outside the show is I have a couple of classes. Uh, In the one case, just yesterday, I was coming from the high school worldviews class, and so I have a group of high schoolers there beginning to look at what's been going on, whether it's Harvey or Las Vegas or uh, North Korea or any of those things, and they're, they're just beginning to try to make sense of the world and their place in the world. Uh, just today, uh, I came, I have a, um, a worldviews, world religions class that I teach at Lone Star College. Uh, it's for the uh, 50 and older, for which now I am now a part of that group, so I can say uh, the elderly among us, I, I now can fit in that demographic. Uh, and I knew that was the case when I started to get AARP stuff sent to me. Uh, and uh, so I reluctantly am, am now very happily part of that group because I say I have a little bit of scar tissue on me. Anyway, coming from that, that group, I asked the same question in my class today. How, how are you feeling, especially over the last couple of years of a knockdown, drag out uh, political campaign uh, in the last 60 days as we uh, around the greater Houston area uh, experienced Harvey uh, while down south of us we got the, the wind damage? You know, Harvey's kind of sort of set up camp and and stayed over us and all of the tremendous flooding that was around and so many people were affected by it. And then that was followed by uh, Irma up through the Caribbean and uh, Florida, Uh, Martha through the Caribbean and specifically Puerto Rico. Uh, We have the West Coast wildfires uh, from California and when we have uh, in Oregon and uh, we have all of the other stuff that's going on globally with uh, North Korea and Iran and, and all the other things, and I just felt like an overwhelming sense of fatigue. Uh, and so I asked the que- high, school, high schoolers what were they thinking about this, and they were, had a sense of, of that as well. Uh, and uh, also the, uh, the over 50 crowd this morning had really kind of the same sort of sense of just, my gosh, I'm just so worn out. So yesterday we, we had a couple of wonderful guests on. We had uh, a Marine who is 
uh, over the, um, the commission for the mem new memorial to memorialize all who have served in Montgomery County. Uh, it's going to be uh, roughly at the corner of 105 and 45 for those of us in the sort of Woodlands Conroe area. It's going to be this beautiful monument that's going to be highly interactive. And, and all of the names who have ever served or are currently serving uh, in the military will be memorialized and remembered there. Uh, and as I, as I mentioned, for those who will ultimately see the video on YouTube or uh, otherwise in the podcast, you'll, you won't really get a sense that uh, he really gave uh, truly uh, of himself in that he had lost both legs in Vietnam. And so we were able to talk to him about his service and just being a hero, especially in light of, uh, of what's going on in Vegas. Uh, right after that, we had uh, Sierra and Christine who were part of the, um, the group in uh, River Oaks in the 5th Ward. And for those of you who are listening now or were listening yesterday on my Facebook page now, I have the, the list of donations and how you can get donations uh, to both of those, orga one organization to both of those locations, uh, since both locations uh, are, have a little bit of a different need, whether it's basic food needs. And we were talking about that uh, even in the River Oaks area, this place that is just across the highway from one of the more affluent areas in, in the Houston area, just south also of Conroe, uh, some of these folks are still living in tents uh, and, and cooking their meals, their primary meals, uh, on camper stoves. Uh, and it's just uh, uh, absolutely uh, astonishing uh, that this is still happening, and so there's still a need. So there's food needs and um, cots and diapers that need there. The fifth ward is, is much the same way. And so we had these stories of people who gave, their, gave of themselves completely sacrificially uh, in service to their country and the Marines, uh, and people, just ordinary people, self-described de self ordinary folks who saw a real need in their neighborhood uh, and said, you know, I can do something. And the story yesterday was that uh, Christine, one of the, uh, the, just a homemaker, as she described herself, who was caring for a special needs child, uh, thought, well, I can put together bologna sandwiches. Uh, and then she said, when I got there to deliver those bologna sandwiches, the need was so, uh, so much larger uh, that now she is even raising funds to be able to uh, move some of the residents. They also need heavy equipment. Uh, so to continue on with that sort of uh, line of, of thinking, uh, I have a guest with me today. Uh, it's Bob Haldy. We've been friends for a number of years now. And Bob, um, I'll let him introduce himself in just a, just a moment. Uh, but was uh, 21 years in the Coast Guard. Uh, and so he, uh, like so many others who we who didn't serve, look at them and call them heroes, uh, certainly that would be the absolute last way he would describe himself and most everybody else. Uh, so uh, we're going to we're gonna spend the next, uh, I guess, remaining uh, 45 or so minutes with you today. Uh, again, we're broadcasting from April Sound at the Conroe, Lake Conroe Chamber of Commerce fundraiser. Uh, and this is the a special edition of the Good News Show with Ted Cox. Uh, so, Bob, uh, let me bring you in and, and uh, say welcome to the show. Uh, why don't you spend a couple of minutes and kind of introduce yourself, and then I know we have a range of things that we want to talk about. Well, thank you, Ted. It's a pleasure being here today, and, and thanks for, for inviting me down. Uh, it's been been great so far. I've been uh, trying to uh, stare down Larry the Lobster here, and uh, <laughs> I think he's winning so far, uh, but I'm trying really hard. <laughs> uh, as you mentioned, I'm my uh, retired Coast Guard officer, a little over 21 years. Uh, I was in port safety and security at the end when I retired uh, out of Morgan City, Louisiana. Uh, I'm the also a current director of the Montgomery County Amateur Radio Emergency Services Group, uh, ARIES. Uh, we have been the last oh, three weeks or so working very closely with uh, the McCares organization uh, that consists of United Way, the Food Bank, and the Crisis Assistance, uh, actually working with uh, volunteer organizations, many faith-based, but uh, also uh, volunteers that have come in from out of state, uh, the Cajun Army and uh, Team Rubicon and those guys uh, that came down to, to really help out, neighbors helping neighbors. Uh, it's been uh, heartwarming uh, and heartbreaking at the same time. So uh, anyway, uh, uh, just glad to be here. I uh, yeah. really appreciate it. Yeah, well, we're glad to have you. Um, 
it's uh, it's actually been a couple of months since we've seen each other, so it's it's kind of fun to get caught up, and we're just letting the whole public uh, in on just a conversation that we probably would normally have at Starbucks, uh, maybe slightly different language, but we'll we'll see. Harvey did that to a lot of people. <laughs> Harvey kept people away for a while, yeah. so yeah, they did. Yeah, I mean we, and, and as Bob was just saying, he had his uh, church responsibilities, and he owns his own business. Uh, and uh, certainly had spent a much of his probably it sounds like volunteer time with the radio and and making sure that uh, the needs were being properly documented and help was pro- was getting uh, uh, routed to him. So tell us, uh, we have a couple of minutes before we get to the break. So why don't you tell us a little bit more about the the radio and. Uh, well, our Aries group, Ted, is yeah. uh, uh, all volunteers. Uh, we're a nonprofit, five hundred one c, and uh, we are. Uh, Radio experts, communications experts, actually, okay. uh, that uh, assist uh, governmental and certain non-governmental enti- entities like uh, United Way and uh, Crisis Center uh, uh, in keeping communications open if communications go down. Okay. Uh, now, were the, did communications go down during Harvey in this, this area? No. Well, first of all, I should ask, is this just for the Conroe, Montgomery Conroe area, or did your responsibilities extend larger we're, we're actually a county-wide organization okay. montgomery county okay so uh north to south east to west uh we're there uh if if we're needed and we also supplement a lot of the bike races and those kinds of things that occur uh oh, giving okay. them uh uh, uh, comms uh, for for their for their races and organizations. Uh, so we also do that to keep uh, keep our skills fresh. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Because it's a the, the, now how is um how, how what is the type of radios that that you're using? What's what's the type of technology and potentially how does it is it is it weather? Does it withstand weather? Uh, better perhaps than some of the newer technologies well actually uh some of the old style stuff was like morse code and uh (laughs) we've moved past that uh we're into high frequency very high frequency ultra high frequencies microwave transmissions okay uh digital packet type communications wait you use microwaves to talk to people absolutely there's a big tunnel right across (laughs) the lake here for real really yeah that's cool i thought it was a little warm (laughs) (laughs) yeah it's uh you know we're on the cutting edge uh of uh, communications cool. technology, and we keep improving all the time. So. So, and so the senders, and so what is the primary function? Is it just for emergencies, or are there off emergency times that that perhaps something would need to be communicated that, that the, the county could leverage? Or Well, the name of our group is, uh, you know, the, the Amateur Radio Emergency Services. Okay. So we're okay. kind of, it's okay. kind of okay. keyed in there. Okay. But uh, we're learning to evolve. Uh, for instance, uh, you know, the communication infrastructure didn't go down during Harvey. Yeah, okay. But still, there was a lot of devastation and a lot of need for volunteers and people to step in and coordinate different issues. Okay. And so we stepped into the uh, EOC uh, at the invitation of McCare's group. And uh, and we've actually performed a bunch of different functions that normally we wouldn't do. Yeah, yeah, okay. Uh, you know, such as uh, liaisoning between the volunteer groups and the organizations uh, uh, and, and, and the victims themselves trying to get assistance. Okay. So good, good. Uh, that was something that we normally wouldn't do. Yeah. Uh, but we stepped in. We're, we're very flexible. Uh, we're, we're a group of volunteers, so we're here to serve. So good. that's what we did. Well, that's fantastic. Well, again, we're... We're going to be spending the rest of the hour with you, so uh, I'm sure there's a, there's a range of uh, sort of current events and some helps that, uh, that you're going to be able to help us. Again, this is the Good News Show with Ted Cox, and we're broadcasting from April Sound during the Conroe, Lake Conroe Chamber of Commerce fundraiser. We'll be right back after the break. Lone Star Community Radio is looking for those who are interested in hosting their own talk show with monthly and weekly slots available on Conroe's FM 104.5 and 106.1 and on IRLoneStar.com. Start your own podcast, create your first YouTube channel, and be on TV. Contact Lone Star Community Radio online at IRLoneStar.com or call the station message line at 936-647-3776. Welcome back to the Good News Show. We're uh, broadcasting from April Sound. It's a special remote uh, from Lone Star Community Radio here out on the April Sound Golf Course. Uh, couldn't be more beautiful. This is, uh, I think we should do this permanently. I don't know. It's a, I'm uh, telling you. It, this is beautiful. This is awesome. I've, I'm having a lot of fun out here today. A lot of good, good golfers. Great lunch they provided us. Oh, wait a minute. Lunch? 
uh, we can swing it if you <laughs> no, want some. I'm kidding. You didn't so, tell me that. Tech. I know. <laughs> so, uh, so we, only yeah, the we, important people get it. Ah, uh, okay. There we go. Uh, see, still, still part of the pledge group, right? Still not advanced to lieutenant and above. Uh, but we're here with, um, in a uh, remote to benefit the Conroe Lake Conroe Chamber of Conver Convert, uh, Commerce, excuse me, uh, in their uh, fundraiser. Uh, of course, as Bob mentioned just a little while ago, we have a stuffed animal here, Larry the Lobster, who is uh, overlooking production uh, while we are broadcasting. And I guess you will probably be able to see that when you look uh, uh, afterwards in our podcast and our YouTube podcast. But again, we, uh, we are normally on, the Good News Show is normally on uh, Thursdays from 1 to 3, and uh, we normally uh, talk a little bit about the uh, current events and what's going on in the world and try to have guests on that uh, are uh, people that you would not normally uh, hear about. Um, they wouldn't classify themselves necessarily as heroes uh, or doing anything extraordinary, but looking at them and talking to them, they really are extraordinary people. And... And so Bob, I think, fits into that category with all the people that he uh, serves uh, and all the things that he would do, uh, both in his, uh, in his church world and his, um, his business world, uh, as well as his 21 years uh, in the service to uh, the, or his service uh, in the Coast Guard to his country. And so in the, in the opening, we kind of mentioned a little bit about uh, a bit of the fatigue uh, that some of us are feeling, and, and it seems to be kind of shared and now, Jake was just saying that uh, the Astros are currently on and just scored. Uh, so there are some places that we can escape uh, some of the uh, the stuff that's going on. But in some th some cases, the the chance for sporting events to be an escape has been even uh, taken from us as well. And so, but for now, for the next uh, uh, few minutes until we go to the break at the bottom of the hour. Uh, let's pick it up um, with a couple of events that just uh, just happened over the last week. Uh, and in particular, we want to talk a little bit about uh, Vegas and what ha what happened uh, out there. Uh, while um, certainly the, the media uh, has been uh, quite absorbed with trying to figure out why, uh, the motive behind it and why, and it certainly seems like that there is a considerable, uh, I think that the the phrasing that most of the profilers are using is sort of a, a lack of a digital footprint. Um, Bob, why don't, you, why don't you come in and talk a little bit about what you, what you observe, maybe what you're feeling and thinking, because you have a perspective that potentially many of us don't have, especially with your safety background, and for, to let uh, other people know that uh, when um, at a church that we both served at, uh, Bob was the primary architect for the safety program that we ultimately implemented. It was had everything to do with uh, radios and vests and keeping the kids safe and exit plans and and all of those things. So, and so one of the first people I thought about as I was watching this unfold in Vegas was, was Bob. And I thought, okay, if he were here, uh, how would he advise me and advise us now on the radio and the people who are listening? Uh, from a safety standpoint. So why don't you share any feelings you'd like to, sure. any thoughts on Vegas generally, and mm -hmm. then advice you would have for us from a safety standpoint uh, more specifically. Well, I, I got to take uh, the phrase that you coined earlier, fatigue factor, and, yeah. uh, and uh, kind of examine that a little bit. You're sure. right. You know, on yeah. the surface, you know, you, you 59 dead, over 500 people wounded. Uh, it seems like it's just another event in a in a week of many events that just you know what next what what more is coming what can come Seriously. and just when you think you've reached the pinnacle of of how bad it can be then it's something else comes and you just have to shake your head and and wonder where it's all going well you know i mean looking at it it's definitely a sad portrayal of of the vilest side of of humanity mm, yes but uh with all the darkness uh of that day um, there was there were some bright spots in the chaos of the moment. Uh, you know, the light really shined on on the best out of many that were there. Right. Uh, the, the concert goers. I mean, you know, these people were there to to attend a concert of music, and they wound up being shot at uh, like like fish in a barrel. Yeah. yeah. And yet, many of these people, uh, just everyday joes, and uh, and. Uh, uh, people who had no training whatsoever in, in first response 
were shielding others. They were guiding people out. They were going back time and again while the shots were still ringing out to, to pull out people out of the, yeah. the kill zone, as yeah. it's been called. Yeah. And, uh, and so, you know, people that you would not expect to, to be doing that really stepped up and saved many, many more lives. Right, right. And then you have the first responders that as the people were running out of there, they were running in. And uh, they were doing their job, you know, and none of those guys would say, oh, we're heroes in any way. They were just, just right. doing their job. Yeah, and you've heard several of them say that. Mm -hmm. You know, even in, the, uh, in just the moments leading up to before uh, we went on air, we talked a little bit about the security guard, the first one to arrive uh, at the room unarmed, uh, certainly could hear the gunfire, didn't have a vest, uh, alerted. Uh, certainly, there were surveillance cameras, so they, he would have uh, the shooter would have seen him. Uh, and there was a report that some 200 shots uh, rang into the hallway, and of course, he was hit. Uh, I don't know if you saw the report that uh, that he was uh, using after he used his key card to get to clear the floor. They had to order him to leave to get triage on his thigh. And so, was, like wonderful. you said, there's there's a number of those kinds of stories. So. Well, those are those are people who have serving hearts, and they they have a job to do, and they know that to, it's a big responsibility, another person's life. And I I experienced that many times during my my Coast Guard career. Uh, I did many things that afterwards I thought, man, that was crazy, uh, uh, you know. But when somebody is in need, yes. you don't think about those things. You know, you 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 your training takes over, your reflexes take over, and you do what needs to be done to get that person out of that bad, bad spot. Right. So the, you know, and we mentioned the first responders, but the medical teams, can you imagine being a doctor or a nurse at that hospital and suddenly all these hundreds of people oh. start pouring in? I mean, it had to look like battlefield and, and you know, they're performing triage. Uh, and I heard wrong report that if the people, if any of the people who were shot actually arrived at the hospital alive, right. they were still alive. Oh, that's interesting. Yeah. I had not heard that. I that was hear. that was yesterday, and maybe yeah. that's changed, uh, you know. But uh, I thought that was a very interesting report, and that was from one of the briefings right there on scene. Okay, yeah, I I did see. Um, uh, you're right. I saw that uh, one report. We were talking to the doctors and the 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 main doctor that was on call, and a couple of people that were called in. That uh, the emergency ward in one of the hospitals, I think it was a UMC, if I remember correctly, I might be wrong, the University Medical Center, um, had already a full complement in their emergency room, and they received 104 new patients within a 60-minute period. Wow. That the first, as you were just describing, the first person to see them to triage had, I mean, you can do the division, I mean, had seconds mm -hmm. uh, to assess uh, the severity of of the wounds and put them in, and I mean that talk about saving lives and heroes. I mean they they truly were heroes. And well, it's a, it's an amazing thing when you're performing triage because there are some folks that come in that are so badly wounded that you you know they're they're given the red card and you know that you know they're going to die that you just don't have time to do everything you need to do to save them right and to actually state that if they arrived alive that they're still alive they did some amazing miracles that day that's incredible i mean, uh, no, i had i had not that, heard that that's incredible mm -hmm. so you know it's uh you know I, i'm really it's amazing we stopped this guy, uh, right. and it's all because of the, the first responders and the police and the uh, security guard that stepped up and did right. his business because uh, I also saw that he had uh, this, this shooter uh, had also scouted Chicago and Boston sites yeah. as well. Yeah. And another venue in Vegas just a week or so before at the, um, I forget the name of the concert, uh, but it was another venue, and, it, and he got a hotel room overlooking, and it didn't wow. obviously execute what he did at, at the Route 91 concert. Um, but, um, yeah, just an amazing group of people um, uh, who responded in almost, I mean, out-of-body sort of experience. I mean, you can hear some of them talking, uh, and uh, they talk about running, and they talk about uh, um, getting cars and commandeering cars in order to take uh, 
mm -hmm. uh, folks to uh, different triage places, different hospitals. Well, Americans uh, have always stepped up when in times of trouble and when somebody needs help. You know, you don't consider, you know, religious background or political background or ask the questions. You just see another person that needs help and you step in there and you do the job. Right, right. Yeah, and um, so we won't have enough time uh, in this segment as we go to a break towards the bottom of the hour. But as we come back out of the, uh, the break at the bottom of the hour, maybe you can spend a little bit of time talking about the safety. And so uh, while it may be difficult to um, uh, give advice that would be um, useful in saving your own life in this kind of environment, perhaps that there is, uh, but also just general uh, whether it's in your home or the mall or a restaurant or a church or any other public gathering, what are some of the things that we should be doing as individuals or as a mother or a father looking out for their kids at a public event? You know, kind of what, sh what should we be looking for? How should we maybe position ourselves? Um, you know, all of, all of those sorts of things. So. Well, the, the term that we want to actually talk about is situational awareness. Okay. And that's just okay. not looking at the floor, looking around, and looking for anything that seems out of place. Okay, uh, good. That's the most basic description of it. Okay, great. So uh, as we come out of break, then we will uh, we'll talk a little bit about what situational awareness means and how can we can actually practice it. Uh, again, you're, look, you're listening to a special remote of the Good News Show with Ted Cox here in April Sound. Uh, we'll talk to you on the other side of the break. Remember to download the Lone Star Community Radio app from your Google Play Apple Store. Bring Montgomery County's Community Radio with you anywhere with your smartphone or tablet. If you are in the Conroe area, tune in on FM 104.5, 106.1. If you are on your computer, bookmark IRLoneStar.com as your internet radio station. Lone Star Community Radio broadcasting 24-7 from the heart of downtown Conroe, Texas. Well, welcome back, everybody. You're listening to a special remote edition of the Good News Program. We normally uh, are on air on Thursday afternoons from 1 to 3 on Lone Star Community Radio. We broadcast on 104.5 and 106.1. Uh, and if you are in your car and are about to land someplace, uh, you can pick up the stream on uh, IRLoneStar.com or our, our, our app. Uh, we are at this, uh, at this remote in April Sound uh, Golf Course, which is just an absolutely beautiful uh, location. Uh, and we're here to, uh, to fundraise, to help fundraise for the Conroe and Lake Conroe Chamber of Commerce with the Lobster Fest this weekend. And so we uh, so appreciate uh, our host here at April Sound for allowing us to come and broadcast. Uh, so in this edition of the Good News uh, program, I have a, a, a longtime now friend of mine, Bob Haldy, who is a 21-year veteran of the Coast Guard, uh, and we were just talking about some of the ev events that have been happening. Most recently, of course, is the Las Vegas shooting, uh, and one of the reasons why I wanted to have Bob on, uh, in addition to just simply getting caught up on air, uh, is uh, his experience with uh, a lot of the safety uh, components within his service at the Coast Guard. And I recall um, Bob and some of the uh, the broadcast uh, at the right at the very beginning of the shooting, uh, which of course is coming from the 32nd floor, uh, some four or five football fields away. Uh, a lot of times um, the description was, well, we thought it was maybe the speakers popping or maybe part of the show. And most commonly what you heard was, well, that sounded like fireworks. And I, while I've never been in that situ situation, thank God, um, I wonder what's going on in your brain that would want to process it as something else other than what it is. That, you know, so, so as you're, we were going into the break, we talked about situational awareness. And in the, it seems like in the times that we live in uh, that we need to be uh, considerably more vigilant now uh, and expect even some of the worst uh, case things when we go out either in public or perhaps even in our home. So why don't you uh, sure. maybe share some thoughts on what you think that we can do as just regular uh, folks. And then I know that you mentioned the Coast Guard and some of the water, uh, water safety. So we'll migrate uh, over there as, you, uh, as your thoughts take you. 
Sure. Well, we, we, before the break, we talked a little bit about situational awareness, and the basic description of that uh, is basically keeping your eyes open, uh, looking around for anything that seems out of place or, or is amiss. Uh, something doesn't look right for the environment that you're in. Uh, suspicious body language of, of folks around you, uh, suspicious vehicles, uh, uh, kind of recognizing that you're in a soft target environment or not. And what is a soft target? Well, those, those are concerts, those are churches, those are parades, the sports stadiums. Those are places where people gather in larger numbers. Uh, those are the types of targets that uh, uh, folks that are intent on doing evil uh, that are have violent intentions, th- those are the types of targets that they look for. Uh, they want to, to inflict as much damage as they can with as, with as little effort as possible. And how do you do that? Exactly like what we saw in Vegas the other day. Right. They had walls around everybody. They had 22,000 people milling around in there. Mm. And he didn't even have to aim. He just a spray of bullets and people are going to get hit. Right. And that's exactly what happened. So uh, how can you do that? Uh, how can you keep track of, of where you are and what's going on around you in your everyday life? And that's just as simple as, as looking around. Many people, if, if you try to look them in the eye, they look down to the ground. Mm. They, they don't really want to, you know, appear like they're, they're um, uh, stepping out. And, and, and actually making themselves noticed. But if you just simply look up, look around, see if somebody's watching you, see if they look funny, if their clothes look funny, if there's bulges in spots that, mm, okay. that shouldn't be okay. there. Uh, those are all the types of things that you want to look for uh, that, that will keep you safe and maybe that of your family as well. Okay, yeah, we have... Um... Yeah, uh, just, I don't mean to interrupt. Not but, at all, so please. Say, uh, Say you see something like that. What what would you recommend doing? Well, the first of all, you're not going to go up and confront the person. Exactly. Yeah. So. That you know, <laughs> you know, you're going to go uh, talk to the store manager. You're going to go t- you know, talk to the nearest policeman and say, "Hey, I just saw this inside there." Many people are reluctant to, you know, because they're, you know, they think that they're going to be uh, uh, shouted down as being, you know, stereotypical or, mm. you know, oh, you're trying to, uh, you know, assume that this person is. But you know what? In this day and age, when you're talking possibly a life or death situation, you need to step out and say, you know, I've got my suspicions about this person. Mm-hmm. Okay, I've seen something. They're, they're not acting right. And, and that's the type of information that, you know, store managers, the store security, right. the local police, they want to hear that. Then they can make the assumption, uh, you know, you're out of it. You, you don't put yourself in danger anymore beyond that. Right. But just a simple pair of eyes and using your brain could save the day. Yeah, and so um, we have a couple of, you know, just to take a couple of examples. Um, so we have a couple of amphitheaters, and certainly the one in the woodlands of Cynthia Mitchell Woods. Um, so we're, let's say we, uh, my wife and I are taking our son to go see a concert. Uh, how, how would you advise us uh, to make sure that we have situational awareness? By way of example, uh, medical tents or exits or maybe the ex- all of the exits or the exits maybe that we didn't come in on or barricades what are some of the things that we maybe in that kind of open air environment of course we're talking about vegas now uh, or right on the heels of vegas we're talking about those types of concerts and and the last thing i would think that we would want to do is alter our lives right in that that stop going to these we want to continue to to live our lives and to some degree it's a it's a price of our open society and free society that we also have a susceptibility uh, to these types of events happening but so we're going into this venue. What would you, well, how would first, you advise us? First of all, you're not going to let fear uh, be the, the uh, con- defining moment for whatever you do. Gotcha. Okay? okay. It's just about caution, using caution and, uh, and looking around and, and knowing what the situation is around you. Where are your exits? Where are the emergency services? Uh, where's the, the police detachment? Where's security at? Those are all things that you want to just, as you're going in, you're looking and so that you know where they're at. Okay. Uh, because if it, if it does become chaotic, you're not going to have time to think about it. You're not going to have time to look. There's going right. to be people everywhere. You're going to be in not a proper state of mind. Right. So you want to have that information before it gets to that point. Okay. You know, you don't want to be in that flight or fight syndrome when trying to, to think 
uh, clearly because it just isn't going to happen. Yeah, because sometimes your your brain you're just going to go into vapor lock. That's right. That's so definitely. and I know that uh, it, as you were talking, uh, what what was coming to mind was uh, uh, an airplane. Mm-hmm. Uh, and many times during the safety uh, talk, which we almost never listen to, but but if we were to listen <laughs> to it uh, and and read the appropriate uh, uh, pamphlets and so forth, nearest exit. Exactly. <laughs> One of the first things they say is the nearest exit may not be the one you came in on. It may be behind you, or it may be a side of you, in, in the case of an open-air uh, theater. Mm-hmm. Uh, the other thing that I was thinking, too, in, in the places like Cynthia Mitchell Woods, there are uh, barricades that are hardened. There's concrete barriers that, depending on what might be happening, you might be able to get behind. You might not make it to an exit. You might not make it to the security guard, but you could... You could shield yourself from something, something like that's that. That's right. Happening. That's right. In a, in a sniper situation, which would be something like that. Yes. Uh, then you know, you're, what you're going to do is you want to take cover. You want to get down and make yourself as small a target as possible. And above all, stay calm so you can think. Right. So you can think about what to do. If there's actually a shooter in close proximity to you, and you're able to get into a room, of course you you go inside, lock the door, turn off the lights, stay calm. Uh, you decide whether you need to run or if you need to hide, whichever is best. Ah, okay. And then if now, the, now do you would you expect that work depending on where you are, would you would you advise to have that plan in mind prior, or because like you said, you know if you're you thinking, need to think it out. You need okay, to think it out. And and if you've practiced I, at first, it's really hard. You know, right. thinking of all the details right. and everything. But after a while, you know, everywhere you go, you look around, you say, okay, there's stairs there, there's a balcony there, okay, an exit is here, okay, there's security over there. You just kind of naturally look and take that in. Okay. Uh, but at some point, if there is an active shooter situation and he's in close proximity and he's coming up on you, now right. you've got a decision to make. Okay. You're okay. either going to run right. or you're going to attack. Okay. And you can attack with anything from a pair of scissors to a fire extinguisher that's on the wall. Okay. The, the shooter is not expecting that. Okay. They're expecting you to be cowering in fear. Right. And, and in most of the places where the mass shootings have occurred, right. that's exactly what it is. They're, they're curled up in a ball and they're waiting to shoot. Yeah. So. Uh, that's, uh, I mean, that is really good. It, it, it is uh, exceedingly sad. Uh, that uh, we have to think through these things uh, in this sort of day and time, uh, but um, yeah, it, but we have to, and, and and you know you can either be sad about it or you can be proactive about it, and so we appreciate you kind of walking walking through that. Um, we have to to go to break uh, again. You're listening to the Good News Show with Ted Cox. We're at April Sound, the golf golf community. Uh, right on the lake, so we'll talk probably a little bit about water safety coming out. Uh, we're here for the Conroe Lake Conroe Chamber of Commerce. Uh, we're so glad you're with us, and we'll talk to you on the other side of the break. A Lone Star Community Radio is Montgomery County's radio station with talk, music, weather, and traffic for Montgomery County. Have a question or comment about one of our shows? Want to know how to reach a host? Just contact the station at IRLoneStar.com. Or call in and leave a message at 936-647-3776. Get involved with your community with Lone Star Community Radio. And welcome back. You're listening to the special edition of the Good News Show on Fridays. Uh, we are here uh, at uh, April Sound. We're in the con- we're doing a benefit, a fundraiser for the Conroe Lake Conroe Chamber of Commerce. Uh, normally, we broadcast the Good News Program with Ted Cox. Broadcast on Thursday afternoons from one to three. Uh, you can certainly catch us on uh, broadcasting as you're driving around the Conroe Lake uh, Woodlands Lake Woodlands area uh, on 104.5 and 106.1. Uh, if you are Currently stationary or about to be, you can stream us on IRLoneStar.com. Uh, and we are here for the final few minutes uh, of the broadcast today. Uh, we're here with Bob Haldy, who has uh, been a, a good friend of mine for, for quite a while now. And uh, he is a 21-year veteran of the Coast Guard, uh, serves on, in many different ways around the county and, and at his uh, local church. Uh, and just going into the break, Bob, we were talking about situational awareness and being aware of your surroundings and begin to have a plan uh, for safety if something were, uh, God forbid, to happen, a shooter like 
Cynthia Mitchell Woods or even a Walmart as you're looking for exits. Uh, since we're so close uh, to the water, I know that this has uh, got a special place in <laughs> your heart, being from the Coast Guard. I know that you want to talk a little bit about water safety, and uh, so I'll, I'll hand the floor over to you and uh, give us some advice on, on what we should be planning on and, and aware of for water safety. Thank you, Ted. I appreciate that. Yeah. I would be totally remiss, uh, being a retired Coast Guardsman, if I did not put a plug in for the Coast Guard Auxiliary here on Lake Conroe. Uh, they, uh, they do a fantastic job. Uh, they they uh, present classes uh, for boating safety, and uh, they also uh, supplement the, uh, the, the patrols on the lake uh, with the sheriffs. And, uh, and if you've got any questions regarding safety or lists of equipment uh, that you should have on the water at all times, uh, the Coast Guard Auxiliary is definitely a, uh, a place to go to get all of those answers. Uh, if you've got a nice shiny new boat and you haven't yet equipped it and you're being pressured to get that boat out on the water and have fun, don't do it. Uh, it's, it's just not worth it. For a few, few uh, extra days of uh, getting the, the proper safety equipment that you need, you could be saving the life of uh, your, not only yourself, but family or friends. And it's just not worth it to rush the time on the water. Yes. So anyway, we, we were talking a little bit about situational awareness. And, uh, and of course, you know, Las Vegas uh, is just another event in a long list of events uh, for half flag uh, situation, mm -hmm. half mast flag situations, right. and it seems like it seems like that flag is down at half mast. Seems to far be. too much. Uh, but you know, defensive ways uh, you can do this. Of course, situational awareness. Part of that is deciding how you're going to defend yourself if the worst comes to pass. You know, whether you're going to use pepper spray or an electric stun device or uh, concealed carry. Okay, uh, something something like that. Yeah, and I mean, for someone who might be considering, uh, might not have ever had gun, a gun in their family or a gun in their possession, I mean, what would you be advising somebody who may be considering uh, getting a firearm, a pistol, or something like that? Uh, what, well, what would be some of your advice on that? Well, this is Texas, so I, know. I think well, most I know. everybody <laughs> knows somebody <laughs> that uh, that is a gun enthusiast, uh, you know, family or I was friend. trying to go through the list. I'm thinking, <laughs> I don't know anybody like that. Come to think of it, this may be a dumb question. <laughs> but uh, but you need to, uh, to ask them, uh, get their opinion, and then if you do acquire something like that, practice, practice, practice. Uh, you, you do not put something like that up on the shelf and then, you know, three years later you pull right. it down and expect to be, you know, comp uh, competent with it. You need to practice with it. You need to know how to use it uh, for your own safety and for those around you. Okay. And would you say, uh, like, would you recommend uh, not just classes for yourself on how to use it in gun safety as well, but also for the, ch the children in the house or the wife? You know, everybody who's living there? Well, uh, definitely the wife. Uh, for the children, you need to have talks with them. I don't know that a, a formal class is necessary, but I was raised in a household that, that was a, a firearm-friendly uh, uh, household. Uh, and uh, right and this was the, in Oregon, too, right? Yes. This, this was isn't in Texas. No, this wasn't <laughs> Texas, but uh, this was in Oregon. Yeah, you're, you're <laughs> <laughs> Which is really unusual, you think, Oregon. I'm a proud Texan, and I got here as fast as I could. Okay, gotcha. <laughs> gotcha. <laughs> but, uh, you know, it's very important that anybody in your house or has access to your house, uh, they understand that you have firearms there and, and respect those things. And gun safes are, are a part of that security. You need to make sure everything's locked up, that there's trigger guards on everything, uh, so that uh, the young ones who don't know the difference, uh, you know, heaven forbid, we, we right. don't want to be hurting anybody. Right. right. Uh, one one last last point that I wanted to uh, yeah, to, to get into time. was you, you know we you know we look in the paper, we watch on TV, we hear on the radio uh, all about darkness. You know, mm. that it seems that the world is just so twisted and and dark and evil these days. Uh, but when uh, when all the darkness is around us, that's when the light shines brightest, mm -hmm. you know? Right. And as I pointed out, the Americans, they all come together in adversity, and, and they help each other, and they sacrifice for each other, and it's so, it's so heartwarming and moving when, you know, in all these times when everybody's yelling at each other and there's so much noise and you don't know, you know, fake news from real news, that when people need each other, that's when they step up, and that's when it's just it's just so inspiring, awe-inspiring to to see people do that. Yeah, and that's that's exactly right. And and while we talked I talked a little bit yesterday on our program, 
And certainly at the top of this one, we talked about the fatigue factor. Mm -hmm. uh, if anything is a counterbalance to the fatigue, it is all of these stories that came out of, of Harvey in our particular area. But certainly you can look at the, the national news. We're reliant on the national news for, uh, for the stories coming out of uh, Florida, especially the Keys in Florida, mm -hmm. uh, and the Caribbean out of Puerto Rico. Uh, where, but you still see so many stories of people that just got into their boats. I, and one of the more, uh, a couple of the stories coming out of Harvey that just sort of were heartwarming uh, certainly were our, our brothers and sisters to the immediate east of us in the Cajun Navy. Uh, I mean, the stream of these folks that packed up their boats, knowing they were going into floodwaters in harm's way, got, came here anyway and helped us. Uh, rescued countless, countless, hundreds, hundreds of people. Uh, and so you had these sort of monumental uh, efforts by so many people. And then you had the small ones. I, I remember one of the stories that came out of the George R. Brown uh, was a gentleman who said, you know, I'm not so sure I know what to do, but I can cut people's hair. There you are. And so he went down and he said, well, I, maybe I'll go down and I'll cut a couple of folks' hair. And as he was recounting that, he was saying that the people, the, the lifting of spirits of cleanliness and that they looked, they were nasty and they had this water all over them in the mud and that the transformation of just their spirit of being clean again. And he, he said, I've been standing for nine hours. And he, he thought, I'll go down a couple, a couple, nine hours. He cut dozens and dozens of of hair. It's the small uh, things hair. make such Su a big difference. Such a big difference. Mm -hmm. and well, and especially like when you're dirty like that, you oh, you know, so to get a, a fresh haircut and, and, and you can't shower. I no. Mean, and if you're stuck in the George R., I mean, and you can't. And you're the same clothes. Yeah. yeah. Just that haircut, that makes you feel at least somewhat clean. Oh, absolutely. And we got to, and we, so we'll, uh, I know we only have a couple of minutes left, but we do have a couple of uh, I'm I have, sorry, one, I have last one last thing, Ted, yeah, please, if I please. could. Go right yeah, ahead. You yeah. know, with all of this, just, you know, I ask if, uh, you know, when you're, whatever you're doing, wherever you're at, uh, just consider the what ifs. Uh, you think about what could possibly happen. Uh, look around and then consider your defensive options at all times. Mm. Uh, how are you going to get yourself out of a bad day? And uh, you'll be a, a lot more confident when seconds really count. Absolutely. Yeah, and that's, that's great advice. And again, Sad that we have to sit here and talk about this. I mean, it really is it sad is. to me. Uh, but, but that we have heroes like the security guard and the first responders. Uh, that we have people who have served in the military like yourself uh, who can come alongside those who have no clue what to do in terms of self-defense and offer really good advice of, oh, yeah, you know what? I never thought maybe I should look at the other exits around me or the other hardened barr barricades. Uh, if something, again, God forbid, were to happen. Uh, talking about the, the Harvey stories, we've got a guest uh, coming up. Uh, we were been remotely broadcasting from the April Sound uh, golf course uh, with the Lake Conroe, Conroe Chamber of Commerce. But as we resume our normal program on Thursday, coming up from 1 to 3, we have two guests coming up. One of them was uh, one of the gentlemen who went around to different um, shelters and sang to them. And uh, I think everyone will be, their spirits will be lifted when they hear the story of, of these songs that we're saying and, and how uplifting it was. And we also will have uh, Terry uh, Jaggers, who is Foster Care Solutions, uh, will be on with us uh, to talk about all the work that we can do for foster and or orphan care. Uh, so we hope that you join us uh, this upcoming Thursday between 1 and 3 with the Good News Program. Uh, we've really enjoyed this remote. Thank you so much, Bob, for coming and, and sharing your thoughts. And uh, we look forward to having you on again. Again, you've been listening to the Good News Program. We'll talk to you again on Thursday at 1 o'clock. Thanks for checking out this podcast of Lone Star Community Radio, Montgomery County's community radio station. If you enjoyed this recording, make sure to check out our past shows online at IRLoneStar.com or their respective video or podcast formats on YouTube, Google Play, or iTunes. If you have any questions regarding the show, either it being about sponsorships or questions for the host, contact the station manager at D-I-C-K at IRLoneStar.com or call the station at 936-647-3776. This show was recorded in downtown Conroe, Texas at the Lone Star Community Radio Studio. And Lone Star Community Radio reserves all rights to this recording and images.